Okay, let's talk about importing and exporting JavaScript files. Now, this is something that uh, up until fairly recently you couldn't really do in the browser. Um, now we have the ability to break up our scripts into separate files, which we could always do before, but now we can load those files and have them loaded in a sequence. We can actually check for dependencies, check to make sure that modules are being imported, uh, do things conditionally that way. So. If you were going to um, have an embedded script, which doesn't normally happen, I know in a lot of my code samples and examples, I'm always putting things inside of an embedded script inside my HTML file, but typically you would have your scripts all in external files. You have the one main, and then we're gonna do imports into that one main one. Um, if you do end up putting your script inside embedded in the HTML file, you will have to add type equals module in order to be able to do the imports. Just a little side note for you. Now I have here my script and then an external script that I'm going to import. Um, the way we do the import is like this. And this is something that's only really been around since uh, Chrome version 61, I believe. Uh, version 67 is the current version of Chrome, so it hasn't been that long. So the keyword import, followed by, in curly braces, the names of the functions or objects that you want to import from, another keyword, and then the name of the file, the path and the file name that you want to import. So we'll take a look at that file itself. Inside there, we've got the key, keyword export in front of a function. So I've got two functions here, myfunc and myfunc2. I put the keyword export in front of this function. That's going to let me bring that into this file so that I can now call this function from inside of here. So if we take a look inside of the page, we run that and seven, there it is. So we ran the function six, it added one and wrote that out. So that works. What about myfunc2? So if we uncomment that one, we run it, we get a reference error. myfunc2 is not defined. So myfunc2, I'm calling it here, and it exists inside the file, but two things are missing. One, I haven't said that this is available for export, and two, I haven't said that I want to import it. So if I just try to do the import. I come back and I run this. There we go, uncaught syntax error. The requested module does not provide an export name myfunc2. So a pretty good error message. Tells me exactly what the problem is. This file doesn't have something called myfunc2 available for me. If I add both the export and the import, there we go. Now both methods are running. Now an alternative, so you can pick and choose which things that you want to export here. So you can go down your list of functions, your list of variables, and put export in front of the ones that you want. Or alternatively, you can do this. So similar syntax to the import, we just put the keyword export, and then inside curly braces, you list off the things that you want to export. So now this would work the same way. Make sure I got these both saved. Yeah, okay, come back in. And sure enough, this still works. So export with the objects, and you can also give aliases to things. So it's called myfunc2, or myfunc3 rather, but I've given an alias to it so that in here, if I were to try and do a console log, and I'm calling the function myfunc3, passing it the number three, so I should get one as a result. Run that we get an error. And that's because, oh, sorry, we didn't come up here and do the import is one of the problems. So I could try to do that, myfunc3, try that first. Same error. It doesn't have a thing called myfunc3 because we gave it this alias. So if we give it the alias x, now you can see that we're not going to have something called myfunc3, we already know that. x is the name, so x is what we would put down here. We run that, and there we are, sure enough. Okay, so that's the basics of imports. Import, export, 
put the keyword export in front of the functions or in front of the constants or the variables that you're declaring and you can use them. You can give aliases to things. So export as, and I can give names to each of these. So this could be as Bob. And then I'd have to come in here, change this to Bob. I'd have to come in here and change this to Bob. Now that's going to work just fine. The way, oh wait, uh, does not provide an export name Bob. Did I not say, no, I didn't save it. There we are. There, now it's working. So that's the basic export import. We can also name something as a default export. Or we can do a wildcard. So I can say, hey, you know what? I'm going to export absolutely everything from here. Just like we do here. So this is a list of different possible exports. So we did export with the list of names. We did it with aliases. We can uh, declare variables to export those. Um, more variables, export function, we did that. That was the first one that we did. Uh, export default expression or default function. Now, if you export something as a default, what you're saying then is, I want to export this, but I don't expect people to know what this thing is. So this is the one right here that I'm doing. Export default function my func. So I'm exporting something, and this is the default export from this file. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to get rid of these things just to focus on that one. We'll comment out these other two. There we are. Now, we are importing something called Bob. There's nothing here called Bob. I haven't provided an alias, but this is being this is the default export from this file. And there it is. So there's the default export running. We were able to give it a name because we set it up as the default. So using the default, normally you would do with one element. There's one object, maybe that one object contains a bunch of functions, that's the default thing that you're exporting. Uh, maybe there's things that you want to keep private, which is why we have this ability to export only one thing. So export will let you take out one function and then leave the other ones as internal things only to be used inside of here. So if somebody imports your file, they don't have access to all the methods. They only have access to the ones that you're exporting. Default lets you say, okay, yeah, there's one thing that you're going to export from my file. Call it whatever you want. I don't care. The name doesn't matter to me. You can call it whatever works with your code. That way there's definitely no naming conflicts. And uh, that's the way that works. So if you're going to export a whole bunch of things, typically you'll just export and then list them all off like, you know, my funk, my funk two, and so on like that. So you pick and choose the ones you want, or you have one thing that you set as the default, that's the thing that comes out, and then you give it the name that you want. All right, so that, I mean, there are a bunch of other ones. I encourage you to experiment with these. There's lots of different ways that you can do it. Um, what I've shown here is just sort of the, the basic, this is enough to get you going with it, uh, the imports, exports. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.